Ah, France. The land of baguettes, mimes, the Eiffel Tower, and manga? As of 2024, France is the biggest manga importer country in the world, and nearly being double the next in line. And as a result, France has arguably become the largest manga fanbase outside of Japan. But how did it become that way, and why has this reality been flying somewhat under the radar? Today, we'll explore how a closed nation, a wave of oriental curiosity, and a history of comic books can all come together to make France into one of the biggest weeb nations in the world. While it might feel like all things Japanese get out there in the world pretty quickly nowadays, for a good while, Japan was a highly isolated country. Following the doctrine of Sakoku, which literally translates to locked country, which meant that they were purposely isolating themselves from about 1603 to 1808. To greatly simplify things, let's just say that time stops for no one and eventually Japan would have to reopen itself back up to interact with the outside world, and the curiosity surrounding this reopening meant that its original flavors were absorbed by some Western countries. Such is the case of France. You can call these the first generation of weebs as Japanese products and styles eventually came to influence French art through a phenomena called Japonisme. Japanese, as you might guess from its name, speaks to the way that Japanese flavor blend into foreign styles in the 19th century, and we can see this in the arts and consumer tastes. In fact, you'll find these sometimes subtle, sometimes obvious, in some of the greatest French artists of the time, such as Van Gogh and his portrait de Pierre Tanguy, where the Japanese influence is pretty obvious. Now, to intercept the, well, actually comments, while it is true that this Japanese influence phenomena affected many European countries of the time, this has been mainly to show that France has historically been open to Japanese culture, but as interesting of a shortened look at history as this was, there are other factors at work that make the import of manga specifically so prolific. Regardless of manga's existence or not, France has a rich and healthy history with comic books, or should I say, les bandes dessinées. Starting from mostly the 1940s, creative minds brought us quite a few well-known series, such as Tintin, Les Schtroumpfs, and Asterix et Obelix, headlining this wave. Now, while these stories were mostly lighthearted and destined for a younger audience, through the maturing of the industry, more adult comic stories also slowly began entering this space, such as 1967 sci-fi series Valerian et Laureline, which have been said to have inspired the Star Wars movie, as well as the 1980s space opera epic L'Incal, which frequently comes up among the greatest non-superhero comics. As such, prior to Japanese manga's arrival to the country, the population was not only familiar with the concept of stories told in comic book form, but some would say they were primed for it. As opposed to other countries who focus mainly on the shonen mangas, France was more overall willing to grab some of the more mature, some of the more deep cut series and bring them into the country, expanding the available library in general, which by extension enlarging the netcast to the kind of audience it would interest. To jump ahead of the video, there are mainly two series that can largely be credited to the explosion of Japanese fanfare in France, of which the first one, we need to understand the logistics behind its introduction to the country of France. Again, for brevity's sake, I will be largely simplifying French history, and if anyone wants to expand on this part of history, feel free to do so in the comments. But in the late 1970s and 1980s, the TV channel competition in France was starting to heat up. During this time period, the number of TV channels available for reviewing essentially doubled, and these channels were fighting to gain market share, and slowly but surely, some channels realized that the children audience had a lot of potential. As such, these organizations began looking for entertainment for children, which eventually led them to to Japan's various animation studios where they would bring back, among others, our first mega hit. First appearing on the small screen in 1978, Goldorak, as it was called, was actually a localized version of a spin-off entry to the legendary Mazinger Z series, which was largely a Monster of the Week kind of show, which typically ended each time with our protagonist and his robot taking down the threat of the episode. While with the benefit of half a century's worth of manga and anime stories under our belt, we can quickly identify how linearly looping the story was for the most part, this formula was both fresh and new for the French population at the time, and catapulted the series as a whole to the then unheard levels of popularity. 
While it's hard to correctly contextualize this in a world prior to the proliferation of the internet, retelling of those who lived during this era often make it sound akin to the popularity of Pokemon in the early 2000s. And with anime only really becoming more popular in the late 1990s, early 2000s for the US market, we can see how France was able to have a leg up with it getting its foot door nearly two decades prior. This lead would once again come into play with the next big hit from Japan. If Goldorak set the play up, it was Dragon Ball that knocked it out of the park. On March 2nd, 1988, Dragon Ball first aired in France, the first western country having dubbed the series, and while some rather heavy-handed changes were made, the series was fundamentally all there, and the series quickly climbed to the top. And once Dragon Ball Z arrived, the series solidified itself at number one. I don't think I need to go too deep into what made Dragon Ball special, as it would be hard to believe that someone watching this video hadn't heard of the series, but Dragon Ball really was the series that kicked the proverbial door down and the floodgates were open. Speaking in broad strokes, anime and manga started to be more heavily desired for the French and it became obvious that both anime and manga were here to stay. In the same way the North American market would have their eyes open when Dragon Ball Z arrived onto their small screens, France underwent that same fervorous phenomena a decade prior. And if you dummy would also like to have your eyes open, go ahead and give this video a like and the channel subscribe and we'll do our best to keep trying to pry those eyes wide. Today, France is a powerhouse when it comes to the space, with over half of all comic books sold within the country being manga at this point, and at least 1 out of 7 books also being manga, France has become the largest customer base for manga outside of Japan, and generally a source of attraction for Japanese media. With some of the largest fan conventions in the world and some of the greatest accessibility to the creative works, France has and will remain one of the focal points of the industry for years to come. And that's without even going into the manga that have been in recent years been coming out of France as a whole, either in part or in whole. With that in mind, why isn't this reality more discussed or simply widely known? As a French speaker myself with a little bit more knowledge about French history than the average Joe, this discovery was somewhat surprising. And while it's easy to have ways this as those who know, know, I wanted to explore this a little bit. First, let's take the title of largest fan base outside of Japan as a starting point. While it's factually true that the French buy more manga than any other country, there is an argument to be had when it comes to whether they actually consume the most manga. Being honest for a minute, many of us, if not most of us, probably do not get our manga fix through the paper copies, and rely mostly on either the official digital sources like Manga Plus or Viz, or through less official means. As such, the internet has largely allowed a large segment of the population to become fans without necessarily needing to buy a book. And being absolutely fair, with how living costs and incomes vary from country to country, for some countries buying a manga is a true luxury, being the difference between putting food on the table or not. As such, there could be countries out there with a larger number of watchers or readers, but that might not directly translate to sales. With all that said, in the truest form of the word, the French are still those who most directly support the industry financially, so kudos there. Speaking of the internet, for those who have the luxury of being bilingual or beyond, the internet can quickly change the moment you enter a different linguistic region of the web. It's not too hard to put that to the test. Take a few wrong detours on YouTube and you might find yourself entering the Italian YouTube community or watching Russian YouTube videos and there you'll find that these other language communities come to develop their own fads, trends, rumors, legends, and of course memes. That might not make sense to others and for the most part, you don't really need to know about them anyway if you never participated in that part of the internet. And this goes both ways. French is a pretty widely spoken language and as a result it has no problem isolating themselves if needed so it's not like they needed you to know these kind of things. At the end of the day, this video wasn't really made to be a dick measuring contest, but rather to shine a light on this interesting part of the fandom and see how individually separate things in history can stack up to accumulate into something later on in history. Well, that's all for me guys, I hope you enjoyed this fun little vacation in France and we'll be back next time. Have a nice one dummies, see you next video.